But the churches today are salvation stations. They get you in the door and they market a cheap grace to promote with what is appealing, with, a, with appealing decor and elaborate speeches. You buy the cheap grace and believe to be secure without any armor, as if to hire a new soldier and send them out to battle. Then when the war or battle comes, you can't defend. So you retreat, believe to be a soldier, then you wave the white flag and the enemy wins the victory in people's lives. You give it up and then they give you their desires, their passions, their pleasures, and they lure you in with the desires that are enticing to the flesh. God says that, it, that it, we spoke through Paul in 2 Timothy 4.3, for a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to put up their own desires, they'll gather around themselves a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Now, he also says in 1 Timothy 4, one, he says, the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. What are these demons, guys? What are these spirits? Why, why do I warn so much about everything? Just everything. Guys, I'm about to break it down so deep. You just want to stick around to see what I'm about to say. So, the other day, I'm going to start off with the story really quick. The other day, I was at, at a grocery store, okay? And this happens to me a lot of times. There's people that, you know, are it, like I, discernment. You pray for discernment always, guys, especially in these times. It's very important. But I was in the grocery store the other day, and this, this girl was just staring at me. And, she, of course, her shoulders were showing, you know, and just very revealing. And she's looking at me, and she just stares at me. And I'll say she's just kind of, it's just, I, instantly I, I felt a seductive, sexual type spirit. And um, I, there's, this, there's this tomato sauce that I had bought, guys. And I put it on the counter. And she's like, this is really good tomato sauce. I talked to her for a minute. Then I'll say she's like, and look, Venus is on the front of it. I had no clue. I had no clue. I just, I'm so used to, in America, you see a lot of stuff from Greek and uh Roman mythology and things like that. So guys, what I'm about to get to is the real to you. And what exactly is Venus? She's like, she's like, I love Venus. I was like, okay. So what is Venus, guys? <laughs> Venus is a god of beauty, love, sex, desire, prosperity, fertility, and victory. And it's also a god of prostitution. Yikes. Guys, I'm about to break down some spirits. You want to stick with me, what I'm about to say. There is also, a, I, I, many times this stuff has happened. I'm able to discern and God's, by God's grace, he's given me that ability to discern different spirits and demons in people. And yes, demons is nothing new, guys. This is all the way back to Jewish times. This is all the way back to the times of Adam and Eve when they sinned, the fallen angels, what were they? I'm about to break it down. Casting out demons is nothing new either, guys. People think, well, this is just Christian. No, it was done in Judaism, guys. This is Jewish Jewish literature. It's, it's actually evidence, it's there. What I'm about to say, there was another time as well when I was going to Hawaii, I was sitting on a, this bus and uh, this guy was, him, him and his old couple, his probably his mom or dad, I don't know, mother-in-law, father-in-law, but they're sitting there on the bus and this guy just looked drugged up, just looking at me. And he's just looking at me and I just had such a weird feeling. Uncomfortable, guys. Then I looked down at his shirt and instantly, because I knew there was just some evil, heavy presence about him. And there was a shirt that said Taoism. Taoism. So guys, I'm about to break down a lot of this stuff. You please stick with me what I'm about to say. So God says, I'm about to break it down. When we see, we see guys where there's one addiction or there's one God, there's always other spirits, other gods or other addictions. When so, for example, if somebody's a smoker, they're always going to be a drinker most of the time. If not that, then it's going to be porn. If it's not that, there's always a love of money in, involved with all these addictions and lust and loves. Guys, I'm about to break it down. Even your TV. I will break down in very big detail of why it's so important, why I tell you to shut it off. You're going to want to stay here. Um... Where, so there was one addiction, there's always two or more that exists. This is psychology studies, guys. The spirits of old were taught, taught from the fallen angels and demons. So the demons it basically taught people things they know. There's spirits all around. So if we could actually see the spiritual world, guys and ladies, 
you would see how many demons are actually in everybody we around everyone it would just it would freak you out probably but don't go so crazy i know christians can go way over the top but you have the power to spirit you should and so you can overcome all all darkness by the light of god in you so a lot of people will say well the devil made me do it the devil made me do it well james 1 14 says each person is tempted and lured and enticed by their own desires when you're tempted and you give in and when, when satan's going to be locked up for a thousand years you can't say well the devil made me do it in galatians 5 16 he says to walk in the spirit so you won't gratify the works of the flesh what is ruled by the flesh guys it, all the way back adam and eve adam and eve were enticed by the flesh and get, given over to the tree of wisdom of good and evil and also in assyrian times they worshiped the tree they took care of this tree and it, they believed that it gave them wisdom of good and evil <laughs> so you're going to see i'm going to break it down you you're, you ever heard well the Bible stories came from other gods and stories in the past, like the flood stories. I'm about to show you. <laughs> it's a lie, guys. Um, yes, there are stories, but they hijacked it, just like everything else. Um, and today, guys, you'll be able to tell. There are, a lot of times there's demons, like spirits, in people. But that's not true. No, God says to offer your, your bodies as a holy living sacrifice, a pleasing aroma. A pleasing aroma. What does that mean? He says that you're a pleasing aroma or you're a putrid stench. That's what the temple represented, a physical way to a spiritual one. So if you're not living your life holy and pure and upright and self-control and sanctified and living for righteousness, you are a putrid pig stench in the nostrils of God. He, in fact, you are an abomination. That's what he told, tells you. You cannot come before God and love the world too. You cannot become God before God and worship the de demons and the spirits and the principalities of the world. He says we do not wrestle with, 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 with flesh, but the spiritual forces and principalities of the air. And it's in the world. It's in people. There's 33,000 denominations, guys, in America alone. There's, there's over uh, about 42 million gods in, in India. And 33,000 denominations. And how many proclaim the name of Jesus? He, God says that, it, that a kingdom divided will fall. The Tower of Babylon meant languages, guys. Everybody was trying to make a name for themselves. Everybody understood their, their, each other. So what is going on today? We're bringing all religions back into one, all belief systems back into ones, all philosophies, doctrines, and theologies back into one. This is actually, this is way back in the old times, guys. This is nothing new. And all to where everybody would be peace, love, unity, and get together for everybody. After all, who was the one that actually flooded the earth? God was the evil one, but who's the God that actually saved them? Well, I'll get to that in a few. Just don't want to get to it right now. So we see coexist love in all religions. Everyone proclaiming Jesus anymore. But which one? Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, and Black Hebrew Israelites. I mean, they can't, they can't right? They have a lot of mixed theologies and beliefs similar to what we believe, right? Most of us. Like, well, no, I haven't really looked. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But... It's always deceptive, just like the Moabites, the Moab and Israel. They, they are all, Israel usually is simulated with the Moabites because their cultures looked alike. Their temple looked alike. Their beliefs and their doctrines and theologies looked alike. It's not enough for you guys to just be like, oh, I, I know this doctor, I know this theology, and people tell you to read commentaries and footnotes and, and all these different things from other people. I've heard one person say, read commentaries. That's how you gain knowledge. That's how you make sure you're... you're, you're you know, dividing the word and interpreting it correctly. They say to look at commentaries of four to five different pastors and, and then try to get your theology and doctrine based on that. No, you need the spirit of God alone. Most of these people, men did not have the spirit of God. They had other, they're led by other spirits, familiar spirits and not by the spirit of God. So, Okay, I'm going to break down some things, guys. Um, okay. Actually, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll get to that in a minute. I actually want to get to this first so you guys get it, get it, get it, you know, and I'll break down some more verses in a minute. If, for example, guys, it, 
I, I, I don't, I hate getting into this stuff right here, but Hollywood. Guys, if you want to break this down, nobody should be watching movies. But from the very beginning, and most of you have started watching movies that are watching me right now, have probably watched movies, grown up watching them. Okay, so in movies, you see, even when kids' movies, there's, there's many things. Many people don't even realize what a lot of these spirits even mean. I'm connecting spirits to a physical meaning, guys. Because that's why God is said to worship one God and one God alone. And be careful. And actually, before I go here, he says that there's familiar spirits. He would cut you off. He says, do not seek mediums and necromancers. And he's, he also says in Exodus 23, 33, he says, do not invoke or mention the names of other gods. He, and then right before that, he says, be careful to do what I told you. Keep the commandments and the laws. And after that, after Exodus 23, 3, he says, keep the festivals. Why? Because a lot of the festivals are simulated to look like the true God's worship. There's a lot of festivals. Guys, I'm going to show you in festivals today, what people are doing, entertainment today, and why these things God tells you to be careful to serve one God and keep his commandments and follow him alone. Look, we see in the kids' movies, a lot of these things as, as from gods from ancient times, guys, Assyria, Persia, Mesopotamia, Egypt, uh, uh, and, um, Rome, Greece, a lot of these things in children's movies and movies in Hollywood all along. It's all this stuff, guys. Everything. So we see that most of what the religions today is mixing. Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Sikhism, Shinto, Jainism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism, Baha'i, Chinese, religion, paganism, and Ayavazi. It's, you ever hear like Ayurvedic medicine? Well, that's that, guys. Um, no wonder these people getting acupuncture and things are possessed by a lot of demons and doing, you know, uh, new age meditation and yoga. Hmm. No wonder you have no power. You can't see the true God and you go to your dead church. Majority of these churches in Colorado have witches in it. I've talked to many and they feel comfortable. They're like, wow, praise God. But guess what they won't do? They won't speak of sin. Just as in the old times, they would not speak of sins. They would, in, in Mesopotamia and other gods, guess what they were doing? They would sing psalms. They would read psalms and lamentations in, in a lot of their festivals, but they would never mention sin. Guess what is common in Mesopotamia? Sex before marriage. It was very common. So guess what? A lot of things look similar, but it was not God's laws. It was not the true way, one light way, one truth, and one life. Now, in kids' movies, I'll go forward. Gnomes, Smurfs, magic, wizards, goblins, gargoyles, trolls. All this stuff is, is, is a lot of demons, guys. If you're letting your kids watch this stuff, and I'm going to get even further... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, Marvel, Batman. Don't you know that Batman was a Mayan god? Superman. Don't you know a lot of these things are from Greek and Roman mythology? But you let your kid watch Marvel and it's okay. It's harmless. No wonder you let them just keep Halloween. No wonder your kids are lawless as all get out. Having sex before marriage. Because you failed, parents. God is good. He loves me. It's all fun and games. Let me keep Halloween and dress up in Max. Worship Satan. You're going to go to hell. It's not fun and games. God says, if you hurt one of my little ones, I will destroy you. It's not fun and games, guys. Putting cr Christmas presents under a Christmas tree. That's what the Syrians were doing. That's what they're doing in Mesopotamia. It's all fun and games. Harmless. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, the new movie Oz, Moana, Snow White. Guys, Mulan, this is all different gods. Tangled, Fantasia, it's magic, guys. Magic, Frozen, Onward, Maleficent, Smallfoot, all this stuff is new age, it's new gods. It teaches you, it's Roman and Greek gods, it's, it's paganism, it's Satanism, it's witchcraft. It's wizardry. It's enchantment. God says, your curse will be upon you. He'll cut you off. If you turn to mediums and necromancers, that's all it is. Everything you see on TV is straight from the pits of hell. Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, Egypt. 
What a revelation. He says those spirits are there. This is not a game, guys. What's so wrong with Power Rangers? You are. What's so wrong with letting my kid watch Superman? You're worshiping Satan. What, what's wrong with Marvel movies? Because you hate God's laws. You're gonna, you're, he says you'll cut you off and you're handed over to receive the worship the beast system. Take the mark. Boom, it's there. You better repent of your sins. It's not too late, but you got to get out of this. Stop fighting. He says, don't, don't grumble and fight and complain. Those are trying to protect you. A lot of these movies teach you authoritism, authority, achieve, gain, be something. It's the system, guys. Success, chase dreams, jealousy, envy, hypersexuality, magic, sorcery, feminism, wish, wish upon a star. What do you think, God, do you think that's from? I'll get to it in a few. Wish upon a star, magic kingdom. It's all spirits, demons, occult, witches, Satanism, black magic, sorcery, new age. It's other gods. It's superheroes. And you grow up and you watch horror movies. It desensitizes you so that you can't even discern what is right and what is wrong. You, what, what people think discernment is today, it was all what is, what is wrong and what is almost right. You think what's wrong and right, but they don't have the discernment. I mean, what is almost right. In fact, people can't even tell the spirits that are evil today because they're so desensitized and drunk. Off other gods. And God says, you worship other gods, he'll cut you off and a curse is going to be upon you. No wonder you struggle with sin. No wonder you have no peace in your money. No wonder you have no peace in your prosperity and your success and all your achievements. Everything you're gaining and striving after. You've been, you've been brainwashed since you've gone to school. Why do you think people come into school and they tell you, oh, we're going to have career day. Oh, I want to be a banker. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Yeah, put that stuff aside and worship the one true God. Stop being drunk. The system, the business, the trade. What do you think these movies can teach you to do? Now you know. Now, the movie. <sighs> Who heard the movie The Star? The Star, that sweet movie about Jesus and the Major, that Christmas movie. Okay, guys. They, they, they advertise new like never heard before. This cool little children's movie with animals. But guess what? Z Zachary Levi. He's a voice entangled in Thor. And Shazam, you know what Shazam means? Shabak, demons, Satan, Belial. These things, why do you think there's a temple of Satan now in Oklahoma? They took out the Ten Commandments, Oklahoma City. We have the, the, the statue of Belial. Wow. Many people are worshiping Satan in their own homes. What? There's our Paul by the, the, the taking out Ten Commandments. You don't really obey the Ten Commandments because you break every single Ten Commandments on your stupid TV. I don't have to be. Now you watch on your phone, don't you? Kelly Clarkson was the voice of trolls. Guys, Joel Osteen and Oprah were the voices in that. Pure Flix, for example. Is capital is it, there's a there's an article written capitalizing on Trump's America. And guess what Pure Flix is? It's new age. Guess who else is, is, is actually backs that? The version Bible app, Craig Gross School. You guys, guys, don't just listen to what I'm saying. Just go look at these people, what they follow, who they follow. Go to PeerFlix and watch what PeerFlix follows on social media. Excuse me. Look at their friends list, guys. Look at Craig Gross School, who they follow. You're going to see a paper trail and you're going to start to track. Wow, there's, there's a trend here. All these people are associated with everybody. I'm telling you, it's not a time to be playing. People think, oh, Pure Flix is okay because it's an alternative than Netflix and Hulu. Yeah, you're just going from one way to another Satanism, another God. But it's not God. Yeah, it is. I'm going to go over here, guys. 
I know this is gonna this this is heavy. I know, I know. And I'm not done yet. It's about to get a whole lot worse. <sighs> Glory to God, God, let the people worship you, please. Just for you, you and you alone. Okay, guys. Um, in Leviticus 26, he says. The soul that turns to mediums or soothsayers or prostituting himself with them. I will set my face against that soul and cut him off from among his people. So consecrate yourselves and be holy for I, Adonai, your God is, is holy. You're to keep my statutes and do them. And I am Adonai who sanctifies you. No, look at that. He sanctifies you. He sanctifies you. How are you sanctified? You, it's not just, I believe, and that's it. The demons believe, and guess what they don't do? They're not sanctified. They don't walk out God's ways. The power of the Spirit to help you walk out the commandments of God. That's the grace. Self-controlled, holy, upright, and denying ungodliness and worldly desires and passions and lusts in the flesh and living godly and holy and sanctified lives until the coming of Messiah. The grace of God. So you cannot be sanctified if you don't have a heart to obey. No wonder everybody hates the laws and they just give over to commandments after man rather than after God's laws. No wonder they can't even see God's laws when they read it. And if they do read it, they can't understand it. Like which hundred is this? Which 613? Then they start becoming mockers and scoffers. Which 613 can you keep? Well, maybe you should die yourself and then you'll see. Maybe you'll be born again and you'll see. Guys, but you say, I don't, I don't seek necromancers and mediums. One second. If you're humble, you're going to wait. You're going to hold on, and you're, I'm going to show you what that really means. But I don't go to a tarot card reader. Guys, it's much deeper than that. In Leviticus 19.31, he says, Do not turn to those who are mediums or soothsayers. Everybody, most of the people, preachers today, that's what they're doing. Familiar spirits. What do you think familiar spirits are, guys? That's why you're familiar. You understand the things in the movies. You understand the things in the churches. You understand familiar spirits of these doctrines and theologies, and you recognize, and that's why the masses follow it. Why? Because they're soothsayers. They're necromancers. They're divination. They're false prophets. He said, do not seek them out or be defiled by them. I am Adonai, your God. Look at in Mark 5, 9, it says that there's many demons. Jesus was there as many demons. And he asked, what, what is your name? They said, Legion, we are many. Legion, we are many. It wasn't just one. Now, now to, remember, I go back to the beginning. I said, where there's one addiction, it's spirits, guys. Addiction is a spirit. There's usually two or three. Where there's one desire, passion, or lust in the world, there's usually one, two, or three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There could be 20 for God knows. I don't know. That's why so many, some people have a heavier stench than others. It's a spiritual stench, guys. Not like, oh, that smells nasty. No, it's a spiritual stench that's like uncomfortable. Now you know what it means when you're in the temple of God. He says, be a holy vessel, sanctified and be purified. Be holy before him. He cannot hear your prayers if it's sin and you're ruled by lust and sensual desires and gratification works of the flesh and passions. You're a stitch to his nose. You cannot come before his nose. His players is like a nasty stitch. It's like a porta potty, clogged up drain, sewage system. You go by a poop plant and all you smell is just nastiness. That's what it smells like to God. And that's how it should feel to us when somebody is sinful. You even hate in the garment stained by their flesh. But yet you have mercy on them, knowing, hoping, will come to compassion, repent. As I was grieved when that lady in the, in the grocery store was saying, look, it's Venus. I was grieved. This world girl is just ruled by her sexual desires and temptations. God, we need help in this world. We need help. We need people to rise up and get, speak with a power without fear, guys. In Romans 6, 16, God says, are you, do you obey God or do you rule sin? Or you obey sin? You're a slave to whatever rules you. Whatever rules you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, 21, 20, it says, God, your body is a temple. Your body is a temple, guys. We are the temple of God, so we will be holy. 
We are to be holy, so the Holy Spirit must fill us and sanctify us to be holy before God. Prayers that are righteous are powerful, guys. In 1 John 4, 4, God says that I have overcome them. He has overcome the spirits. We are to tread the scorpion and the serpents, guys, the spirits. We have the power and authority. Why do you think Jesus casted out demons? Why do you think he had authority to call them out and cast them into pigs, into the sea? He had the power to heal people. This is the power of God. This is not some Christian Catholicism. This is some Jewish stuff that existed long ago from the God of God and King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Revelation 20.10, the devil deceived him. The beast and the false prophet. What's the false prophets? Every spirit, guys. He put them in the lake of fire burning with sulfur. Just like with Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll be just forever, guys. Just burn up. He says forever and ever. Tormented day and night. Forever and ever. So don't get captivated with those that say there's no hell. They're already dead, guys. They're ruled by sin. They're ruled by arrogance. They're ruled by deceiving spirits and familiar spirits. They take pride in another God, a spirit of arrogance, pride, doctrine, theology, education, and knowledge. And I'm about to break down these gods in just a minute. Just bear with me. Bear with me. Familiar, familiar spirits, guys, are an entrance of one's life. It can come in, in forms of your desires, your temptations, your passions, what is pleasing and emotional to you, what feels good, what help, helps you love your life and, and try to hold on to God's life too. That's how it happened. When something is displeasing to you, instead of changing and re taking the rebuke and correction, you shun it away and you reject it. You don't want nothing to do with godly living and holy living and self-denial. You shun it. You say, I don't want that. This is too hard. You don't want to go through the purification process refined by fire. You don't want to die. You don't want to go through the suffering and bear the cross that Jesus is bared. You don't want to go through that holy living and be sanctified like the children in the desert. The ones that endured to the end, they entered the promised land. Those that did not and go through the sanctification process were dead. They dropped dead. Hear the cry of God. It's comes, it can come through transcendental meditation, necromancy, visualization, witchcraft, drugs, and alcohol. It can come through many different spirits. Spirits in your TV, spirits in your music, your passions, your lusts, your desires, what you see, what you hear, what you just keep yourself open to. Walk in the spirits and you don't gratify the works of the flesh. What does that mean? Spirits will gratify different parts of the flesh. You don't have to be worried all the time. Well, 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 you know, demons are all over me. They're all over me. No, what you need to do is trust in God and know the power of God's spirit and give away to the works of your flesh and put it to death. That's the only way you're going to have everlasting life and eternal life and see freedom on this earth. God gave you a power. That's the blood of his covenant and the sacrificial land that died for the sins, for your sins on the cross. So that you may watch clean and have a power to overcome this world and the spirits and the sins and the lust and the passions. Everything that brings death in this life. Your money cannot bring you life. Your house and your car can't give you life. The gods of the former ancient times are desiring these things. The children of ancient times went after our gods desired these things. Saul in 1 Samuel 28, 3, 8 through 9 was an example of of secret spirits and mediums, others familiar spirits. Second Kings 21, six, King Manasseh was another one. Passing kids through the fire. You're like, I don't kiss, pass my kids through the fire. Listen, you know why they did that? Because they wanted success, prosperity. They wanted money. You see these spirits? Do I have to speak it again? They pass their kids through the fire for money, success. They wanted their own glory, their own fame. They wanted riches. They want everything to go good with them. They wanted the produce of the harvest to be ripe and plentiful all the time. That's so those people on the earth, they don't want to go through, the, they don't want to go through a hardship. They don't want to go through a famine. They don't want to go through a physical famine so they can have a spiritual, you know, feeling of God's word. They can't go through the spiritual, you know, a physical famine in order to die to themselves so that God may be glorified through them. They can't go through that. So they want an easy life. 
That's why your buddies just relax, take comfort, take an easy life. So was the people in Matthew that God says were caught off guard eating and drinking and just joined their life. And guess what happened? They're destroyed. They didn't eat, get enter him with, in with him in his kingdom. King Manasseh was, was seeking enchantments and sp familiar spirits and wizards. In 2 Kings 23, 24, King Josiah removed familiar spirits. He removed it. Isaiah 14, 3, he says, The spirit of Egypt, they shall seek. The people seeking after Egypt. This is Revelation 2, guys. It's there. It was figured to be Saddam in Egypt. They shall seek idols and charmers with familiar spirits. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying in that verse. And God's judgment will destroy them. It will come upon them all. And that's why Ephesians 6, 12 says spiritual forces. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with spiritual forces and principalities. We're to live for God. Live for God. Man. Guys, this is so important. This is so important. I'm about to show you physical spirits, guys, and physical things that people worship and where the gods came from, different gods all the way up from past to present times. Guys, you have to, everything has to be from the root. That's why I say everybody's fighting for everything and rioting and, and uh, you know, trying to fight for something in life in front of the courthouses, but they're not fighting for God's laws. Why? Because they're still holding on to the spirits of Satan. No wonder the churches are so dead. If we are, if guys, if everybody's shouting revival, revival, just truly revival, strip clubs would be dead. Bars would be dead. Alcohol stores gone. Hollywood out overnight. Movie theaters out of business. There'd be no more porn. It'd be gone, guys, overnight. There'd be no more abortion clinics. Funding to these false churches would be dead. They're all going out overnight. These pastors gone. Fames gone. Riches gone. Everybody just getting rid of their houses, wanting to live in a, a smaller place so they can just love their neighbor more. No wonder nobody can love their neighbor because their house is so big. To store more crap in it. I got to buy more house. No wonder the, 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 <sighs> no wonder the storage unit business is booming so big. Because you have to store all your crap that you don't need. But it's treasure to me. <sighs> Mithraism. They celebrated Mithraism on December 25th, guys, in Rome. Mithraism and Christianity merged together. It was from Zoroastrian in Persia. It's those Austrian religion guys, when it goes, dates all the way back to Mesopotamia, Babylon. I remember, Babylon was destroyed. It was the goddess son, he slayed the bull, you know, the bull worship. It was a god of justice, he fought evil, and he was a good shepherd. You see how they mix? There's people dropping off right now because they're not ready to hear the rest of this. Or they come back in, I don't know. <sighs> there is also another God, the same God like it in Babylon called Utu. Venus was, from Bav was also a God in, for, of Ishtar. Now you see Easter. Inanna was another name for her. Babylon. Guys, it says do not evoke the names of other gods in Exodus. What does that mean? Don't worship other gods. I'm saying these so you're going to get to see. You got you to understand these spirits, guys. <sighs> Venus, and of course Ishtar too, was, it, that's where it came from. That's what I'm showing you. These gods came and merged to other gods. Rome brought in all gods into one. Christianity today brought all gods into one. Look, of God of beauty, no wonder these women love their beauty so much. All about that makeup. Love. No wonder everybody's chasing love. Can't stop. There's, it's a lust, guys. Such a, a huge lust. Sex. 
No wonder everybody get, get just everybody wants sex. Now between a man and a wife, a husband and a wife, I mean, they have desires, prosperity, fertility. Everybody's wanting these babies. There's nothing's wrong with wanting a baby, guys. But you put wanting a baby over God. Hmm. Victory. Guess what the child was? Cupid. Child of Venus was Cupid. Now do we, now you see why we keep uh, Valentine's Day? And the astrology of Venus returns on February 14th. Hmm. No wonder nobody can see the way. No wonder nobody can see the truth in the life. Because you're worshiping pagan gods. <sighs> Nikasi was a goddess of beer and alcohol. Satisfied desire and satisfied a heart. It was a priestess of Ishtar that they said, oh, it served with Ishtar in the, in the temple, right? These guys, these people, spirits, they worshiped. I'm showing you a physical to a spiritual way. And now we're seeing it today. Satisfied a desire in the heart. Love a God of beer and alcohol. You also know Venus was a, a, a God of prostitution. That, now you see a spirits in prostitutes. You, have, you see a spirits in the desire for beauty and sex and love all the time and desire. That's why you have feminism because it's a victory. A God of healing. There's also, there's always a God of healing. Destroy evil spirits. <laughs> the God of moon, stars, sun, and planets. And now you see new age. In fact, there is 12 gods of success in Rome. Hinduism, there's a God of success. Lakshmi, Lakshmi. And G Ganesha. Guys, I'm showing you how these spirits mix. Christianity has it today. Guess what they call it today? America, they just call it Jesus and they worship their riches. Hmm. Uh-oh. They want success. No wonder everybody wants to be a basketball player. Don't you know there's a God for that? And no wonder everybody wants to be a professional athlete. Don't you know Nike is for fame, glory, and victory? No wonder they had the check mark. No wonder everybody's wearing Nike and loves those that love it. Huh. Maybe that's why he says don't mix with the, the foreign nations. Don't wear what they wear. Could it be because they're sacrificing their clothing to demons? You're not sitting at the, de at the table of God and the table of demons too. Bat was it Egypt. It was a cow. No wonder. Oh, wow, a cow. They came out of Egypt and built a cow. Success. Plutus was Greece for it was a god of Greece for success and wealth. In Rome, success was in all twelve gods of the planets. In Greece, at Phagia and Demeter was a spirit of gluttony. No wonder everybody just loves eat, 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 eat. And they, oh, if a diet, if that means getting rid of gluten, oh my goodness, God forbid, I give up my bread. God forbid I give up my cake. Can't eat, no, can't eat something healthy, can you? Bunch of gluttons eating like a bunch of pigs. No wonder because the children of Egypt did the same thing. Of children let out of Egypt did the same thing. Why? They want to go back to that God. Why? Uh-oh. Because they wanted the cucumbers, the fish, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. They said, when we had these things, we were, we were happy. Things were good with us. So they'd rather serve foreign gods and ser serve foreign spirits and submit to the true God. Now, I'm not talking to you to have an eating disorder. What, that's a per whole different issue. What I'm talking about is those that just want to eat all the time. And Don't you know? Could it be that the, ra the raven brought Elijah two meals a day? Most of the time they eat two meals a day. Could it be that maybe we're supposed to eat two meals a day? I don't know. Where'd three meals come from? Maybe we're too fat of a nation. Apparently we are because we just hoard all kinds of money and riches in our homes. Nothing's wrong with eating, guys, but when you take it more, more abundantly than God, that's all you can think about rules your mind and you can't wait. You're, you're mad right now because you the coronavirus, you can't go to a restaurant. You're mad because you're tired of takeout. 
I gotta sit in my fine dining where you're dead. <sighs> Everything that you see of other gods that were in foreign gods that were gods of grains, agriculture, or harvest were a god of gluttony, success, wealth. The same with gods of dreams, peace. Osiris was one of peace, but a false peace. Goals and success. Renanutet is a god of Egypt for the same thing, for gluttony, for grains and agriculture, harvest and gods. Look at here. Tyke was a god of luck. Remember I talked about that Disney movie, Wish Upon a Star? God of luck, you have a, you have a wish come true. Again, guys, these people say good luck all the time. I know I find myself occasionally saying it, and I don't mean to. It's engraved in our, our just our culture, guys, in our speech a lot of times, and I don't mean it in like that. But it's there, guys. So we got to watch what we say. Try to tame the tongue. Fortune. It's a god of fortune, success, and prosperity. Apollo was a god of music and healing. No wonder nobody can shut off this carnal music and this new age contemporary Christian music. Huh. Again, other gods made psalms and lamentations and made their own harps, just like they did over here. So did Moab. But guess what Israel did? Mix with Moab and God destroyed both. But the people that didn't do it, served the one true God, he delivered them. But you always notice they didn't mention sin. And if they did, if they didn't mention anything, guys, there was morals and values even back in the Mesopotamia era. But guess what they didn't do? There was always sex before marriage a lot of times. No wonder the pastor won't talk about not living together when you're not married. Well, if you're living together and you're not married, you're in fact in a, in a, in a committing fornication. And you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So you better get married or you leave. Wow, my pastor won't tell me this. Well, I am. So I'm not going to be, the blood is not going to be on my hands. No wonder your, your marriage isn't blessed because you think sex. You can have sex before marriage. Guess what they did then? They're doing that in Assyria. Assyrians believe that. The Assyrian spirits believe you can have sex. That's why you have these, these gods of fertility and sex and love and beauty and desire. Why? Because now we have this new group rising up saying, oh, well, you know, especially some of these Hebrew roots are like, oh, yeah, you can have multiple wives. And some of them are like now they're saying, oh, it's actually marriage. It's, sex before marriage is actually marriage. How much dumb can you be? Falling after deceptive spirits, no wonder you can't see. Athena, a god of wisdom, education, and knowledge. Look at that. No wonder everybody takes pride in knowledge, education. Got to get that paper. Guess where that structured format came from, guys? System. It came all the way back from Mesopotamia. They had an education system way back then. Went into Egypt. Guess who really structured it? That's why everybody's like, oh, I can't watch your stuff because you need to structure it. I'm tired of the uh, ums, and, and. Well, maybe you should actually get stop worshiping a god of education and taking pride in your in the haughtiness and your education and your wisdom and your knowledge and your structured that Rome actually did and Greece actually did, the structure education system. And now it's coming its way into America and across the world because now we have all these colleges. And guess what else is having colleges? All these ministries, churches, we got to teach them our way. Teach them a different God is what you're doing. Got to make money out of two. Guess what that money, that God of money was. Should I tell you some more? Again, God of success, prosperity, money. Hermes is a God of boxing, gymnastics, and sports. <laughs> I know, I just upset some of you. I did gymnastics before guys, but do I do it anymore? No, I did basketball before, I did track. Do I do it anymore? Oh, no, it's gone, it's all gone. Look guys, Mars is a god of martial arts and a god of war. Wait, brother, you're telling me that martial, yes I am. 
Because why do I say a God of spirit is a God of hate, of forgiveness? I understand. I, I did this stuff, guys. I did it. I know. Did I do it anymore? No. Now you have these stupid preachers today trying to mix martial arts with their sermons. I know there's one big one. This is his, his video went viral because he did some Crave MAGA move with the gun pointed at his head and he took it out of the person's hand. Yeah, I know exactly. Guess look at who that person follows. Sports, Rapzilla, tons of other things, guys. And that's why he, he makes over 130000 a year from donor money. It's right there in his documents. Spirits, guys, spirits after another. There's one addiction, there's one desire, there's always another, there's a second, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and I'm just, and Satan's probably going to hit me hard after this. No wonder everybody wants to fight. A God of war. It's the spirits, guys. Why do you think they worship these people? Because it satisfied their pleasures and their desires. Why do you think the Olympics, where that came from, guys, it came from the Olympic gods? And people just watch that stuff and they praise those people. Why? Because there was a, a God of Nike, fame and glory and victory. That's why everybody's competing after one another. They're, that's why it's, they're, they're, people can't get their heads out of their you know, the rear ends and actually see the truth. Excuse my language. But it's not cute that, wow, my child's a, a successful basketball player. <laughs> you want to give them a cookie? I mean, I'll give you one if that's what you want. I'm not, no, there's nothing to be praised about that. You, in fact, you, you, you deserve to be told you failed, parent. cheering your kids on screaming after their sports games and you get mad if they lost a the game. Now look, there's a God of Mercury. There's a God of shop, shopping, merchants, travel, transport of goods. Yeah. What is all these gods being going to be destroyed in Revelation 17 and 18? Again, I'll say that again. A god of Mercury was a god of shopping, merchants, travel, transport of goods. No wonder people love business and trade so much in shopping. Nothing's wrong with shopping on, for some things, guys. I'm not saying that. But people it, it can't help but do it week after week after week after week. After. It's an addiction. Because you have a different spirit and you think you worship Jesus. The Jesus I know, the God I know, the Yeshua I know, who is Yeshua? Yeshua saves and he delivers you from that stuff. And Yeshua saves. Aphrodite is a God of beauty, love, passion, and pleasure. Again, we see that with Venus. Is another God from there. Ishtar was another one. Dionysus was a god of pleasure, party, and entertainment. The festivals back then were entertainment to them because they had acting, they had sports, they had festivities, they're eating and drinking, just having fun. I wonder ever all you have barbecues while watching sports because you worship more than two gods. <laughs> Probably worship three or four. And if we want to back it up, guys, in Egypt, there was all their festivals, all their holidays were for gatherings, for worship during festivals, giving gifts and thanks to God to, and request favor. Favor is upon you. No wonder Christmas is about gift giving only a day. No wonder Easter is about getting Gifts of chocolate and candy. So it was in the Roman days. Remember, Rome took all the gods and put it in the one. And I'm talking spirits here. It's what your desires. That's why I keep saying, you're not going to see life if your TV is on. You're not going to see life and you, take, you just love your house so much and your car and you want these things. You are willing to die to live for God. You're not going to see it. Look at this. In Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50, God was saying that the sister Saddam had pride and fullness of food. 
an abundance of idols, idleness. They didn't strengthen the poor and the needy, and they're haughty. They had, to, they had and what they did in Saddam, they're so greedy. They didn't take pleasure in God. What they're doing is to, taking pleasure in other gods, other spirits, other demons. They sacrificed their lives to demons. There's homosexuals. Same thing today. And, but that was the main thing that killed it, guys. It was people's desire, their lust. Their lust ruled them. Now, we see Enki was a god of wisdom, intelligence, water, mischief, and trickery. No wonder that's what all, all Halloween is all about, ain't it? Mischief and trickery. That's why we have April Fools. Where do you think that derived from? Some of you still keep it. Huh. Where do you think leprechauns come from? And you just guys just worship that day. St. Patrick's Day. Huh. Yeah. No wonder you, you can't see the true way. No wonder you're mixing everything. Just, think, just like you mix all your theologies and doctrines and your beliefs and you can't find a true church. A God of wisdom. So there you go. It's education, guys. Success. Of crafts. They built things. Of magic. If you're doing magic, guys, you, I don't care if you're husband or wife or who you are. If you love magic, you're worshiping demons. But, but I don't do that. I don't, it's, it's all demons, guys. All derived from it. Derived from it. Exor exorcism. That was another one, guys. So why do you think the, that we see exorcism? That's not biblical, guys. That's why some of you watch movies called exorcism and horror movies. Why? Because you love that stuff. Because you have the same demons living in you. But you're like, I'm scared watching it. Yeah, no wonder. You just opened up your portal to your mind to watch this stuff. Casting out demons is not what Jesus, or, or exorcism is not what Jesus did, guys. That's casting out demons. That has authority over it. That was not an exorcism, guys. Not an exorcism. Enki was a god of healing. You see how it can mix with Christianity? Creation, energy, fertility, art. Well, there was art. How much art? The paintings. They sound familiar with uh, uh, Greece and Rome, many other cultures. Fertility, sex drive. No wonder, I th it makes sense now why everybody, there's all these naked statues in Greece and Rome. And people are making naked art as if that's something normal. That's not normal. You're worshiping, you're, you, there's a demon living in you and you can't even see it. Why do you think a lot of places were destroyed? Pompeii was destroyed, and there's all the sex stuff, sex stuff all over the place. But that, yeah, I don't have a lot of sex stuff all over the place. Yeah, but it's in your computer history, in your phone history. You have sex stuff all in your mind because you you can't die to your lust. Enki was called the son of God. See how that mixes? And there's people today that try to say, well, Jesus is made up. This is already back here in Mesopotamia times and Zoroastrianism in Egypt. These gods came, Jesus and Christianity, all that's made up. They don't even know what they're talking about because they're already ruled by these gods. Enki was called the son of God that saved the people from the flood. He, he said he defeated God from the flood and saved the people. And Leo was another god they worship, which is earth, wind, air, agriculture, and sky. Everything that it was abundance. Everything that people seem to worship today. Anu was a god of wealth. Hmm. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I don't know what else to tell you guys. You see, these things were all there beforehand. People worship these things, these other gods, and they don't even know that they're worshiping it. They can't even see what a familiar spirit is. And Christianity today, all we're doing is just mixing. We're mixing. Judaism is mixing. The world's religions are mixing. 
Everybody's mixing everything into one. We're all seeming, seeming to understand each other, guess what, in one spirit. Guess what, there's many spirits, but there's only one spirit of God. One spirit of God, and we're not to mix. We're not to mix anything, guys. And um, I want to say this, that we have to make sure that we're walking in the Holy Spirit of God and not a familiar spirit. If we're walking in familiar spirit, we will not endure till the end. Now, I hear a lot of people say, and I'm going to read this. People love to use Philippians. Um, I'm going to go over here really quick. Okay. 1 9, Philippians 1 9 through 11. Now, I'm going to read this verse. Now I pray that your love might overflow still more and more in the knowledge and the depth of discernment in order to approve what is excellent, so that in the day of Messiah you may be sincere and blameless, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, to the glory and praise of God. And a lot of people love to use this, especially with the whole Kanye thing and everything else. That's in every other church. They love to say this. Guys, people would love to say, like, what's, what's the purpose? Everybody's preaching Jesus, so that's, that's a good thing. They love to use this. Philippians 1, 15 through 18. They love to say that so, that you might do everything. He says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you might be blameless and innocent children of God in the midst of, of a crooked and twisted generation. Notice he says that don't do everything without grumbling and arguing. Don't argue against one another. Those are trying to correct you in the truth. Yes, you're always going to have people that are going to come scoff and fight and argue, but try to ignore them. Try to ignore them. Um, he says, among you, shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that I may bo boast in the day of Messiah that I did not run and labor in vain, but even I am being poured out in a drink offering upon the sacrifice in the service of faith, share the joy with you all. So the same way rejoice and to share in joy with me. He was in prison and suffering, guys. So when he says this here, in uh, 2.12 through 16, um, let me see. He says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, guys. For his good pleasure, the one working in you is God, both to you and to work for his good pleasure. That's what he's saying. He says, don't do everything without grumbling and complaining. So even if you're going through a hard time and going through the fire and the sanctification process, do with it without mumbling and complaining. There's people that complain and get a flat tire, guys. Guys, it's going to kick me out right here. Please come back in and I'll, keep, I'll, I'll continue this. This is very important. So please come back in. Many people grumble and complain because their hard times are going through. It could be their money or their job, a loss of job, whatever. There's people fighting. That's why there's people protesting today because they're upset because they can't work. Do everything without grumbling and complaining. Do everything, work for him for his good pleasure. And they don't want to do the work for him. They're not doing the work for him. That's why they're fighting about their jobs. It's, that's the thing. It's your, you enjoy God. You love him with all your heart, soul, and mind, or you love the world. But there's people out there that use this verse right here. So he says here in, in 1 Philippians 12, he says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually resulted in the advancement of the, of the good news. And so my imprisonment, imprisonment is the cause of Messiah has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian guard and to everyone else. Because of my imprisonment, most of my brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord to dare more than ever to speak the message fearlessly. Some are proclaiming the Messiah. This is where people would love to use through the whole Kanye movement and everything else as they try to use about their false churches. They say some are proclaiming the Messiah out of envy and strife, but others out of goodwill. The later do so out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the good news. The former proclaim Messiah not sincerely, but out of selfishness, expecting to stir up trouble for me in my imprisonment. But what does it matter? Only that in every way, whether in dishonesty or in truth, Messiah is being proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. He was suffering. 
He's not saying, oh, this is okay that, oh, Messiah is being proclaimed for Jehovah Witness or a Mormon. This, this has nothing to do with that. Black Hebrew Israelite has nothing to do with that. Or a false church. He's saying that because some people are doing it out of jealousy or envy, out of him, because they're jealous of him. But yet they're still doing the work of God. That's the thing, guys. They were still teaching the true word of God. This has nothing to do with they were teaching a different doctrine. He says to hold to the doctrine in the, in the teachings that you have been instructed. He told Timothy this. That would be, that'd be hypocritical of him to speak that when he's just saying that there's going to be seducing sp spirits of demons and doctrines of demons that people will be given over to. And that, that you know, he says to withhold firmly to what you have been taught. But there, these some people were joining him, they're with him, and then they started doing it out of envy or strife, or, you know, not out of goodwill for their brothers and sisters, but some do it out of his love, but he's saying, but some, he's like, I'm appointed to defend the good news, the truth of, of Yeshua the Messiah. Some proclaim Messiah, but not sincerely, but out of selfishness, expecting to stir up trouble for him. That's why they're mad at him. But look what he says. He says right here in the same letter, brothers and sisters, 317, join in the following my example and notice those who walk accordingly to the pattern you have in us. For many walk who are enemies of the cross of Messiah. Look what he's saying. I have often told you about them and now I am even weeping as I tell you. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory is their shame. They set their minds on earthly things. You see it? There's the spirits, guys. God has came to tell us a true way and a true life. Give us one way, one truth, and one life, and that's it. And there's so many different gods out there. There's so many different teachings out there. So many different beliefs. Most of the doctrines and theologies you believe today came from the Catholic Church. It worked its way here, and it started making its way into a beneficial system for man and order, which God was their belly, and they're still get, having gain, receiving gain, and that's why you pay to go to a Bible college or seminary because it's not about teaching God's word, but gain is their belly. And why do you think the people being put in the churches are those that went to Bible colleges and seminaries today, and they boast them up and praise them and worship these men? There's a reason they hated A.W. Tozer, because he never went to one, right? But they ended up giving him an honorary one to, so that he could teach. <laughs> uh, and guess what? He didn't speak. The greatest men I know do not have a Bible college degree in seminary. The idiots have one. That teach you a dead gospel and a dead doctrine that's not going to save anybody. So that's why I'm saying, guys, there's, it does no power to overcome sin and the world because they, they have no, they're not walking in the spirit, but they're still living for gain, something to gain out of this life. And that's why I say, guys, we must be careful. We must be very careful what we're following after. And there's everything that, just like with Moab, guys, and Israel, they always looked alike. They always mixed alike. They looked alike, so it looked appealing to both. But the thing with Moab they look more enticing to the flesh than what the God of Israel was. So even though they, they had the same temple, very similar, all our gods had temples, okay? But they, they had different systems that they believed in, different morals, very similar morals, but it was different beliefs, similar doctrines, but not the same doctrines, similar laws, but not the same laws. So we see today, the Christian church has said, well, oh uh, yeah, you know, uh, well, here's the thing. The law is spiritual. It's within you. That's the Holy Spirit within you. If you have the law of God written on you, the sealing of the Spirit, you understand His laws. You're going to be awake. You don't need me to tell you, oh, this movie's bad. This is bad. That's wrong. This is right. The Spirit will tell you, but the only reason you are listening to it is because you're not telling God, I'm ready to submit and obey you. Lead me. Guide me. Protect me. You already know what's right. You already know what's wrong. He says you won't need a teacher. Yes, you're going to know that you need the fundamental elemental truths of the doctrine of the Bible, the true doctrine, but you, God's going to tell you whether it's right or wrong. 
sometimes people don't have the discernment and they think, well, no, brother, you're wrong. This is wrong. That person's wrong. This is wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. You're going after person, person, person. And you're the same way they did with Paul. They're, they're proclaiming everybody. Oh, I worship this person. I worship him. I follow him. I follow him. This one, he's like, I'm glad I never didn't baptize any of you. Then you might worship me. Paul didn't care to be worshiped, guys. He wanted people to see the glory of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. That's it. Everybody wants to be worshiped today. Everybody wants to be praised. Everybody wants money, gain, all the time. Man, we, we got to be careful that we're not mixing with these things, guys. 33,000 denominations. How many are preaching to Jesus? What's the right one? The Baha'iism, just like you see the Baha'i gardens, guys, there's, there's certain temples in this in churches or synagogues, you can call them, I don't know, what, in the world. There's several of them. I think there's seven or eight. I can't remember how many. But there's Baha'i gardens in Israel. And what do you think that is? That, that, that belief system came from a, a false prophet that wrote a book and said he was actually from God. All the prophets, all the past, you know, uh, people that people idolize, the, the the messiahs from Islam, from Buddhism, Hinduism, that he was the ultimate one. That was metaphoric for the ultimate one that was coming. So Baha'ism was to bring peace, love, and unity into all. To coexist with all. Now you see in Israel right now, you have all religions praying together. That's the most hypocrisy, just ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Now there's a guy called, what is his name? I'm going to straight up say his name. I don't care. Naftali. Naftali something, I don't know, he's on, he's on Instagram, guys, and a lot of people praise him. He's friends with Joshua Aaron, and I'm going to straight up say it. This guy is a demon. He claims Messianic Jewish Judaism, and he's, he's mixing other religions. That's why he's bringing this peace, love, and unity, because he's trying to get up in politics. Where's the desire coming from? No wonder. No wonder everybody's drunk. We just, just love everybody. Just love everybody. Be accepting of all religions. That's okay. As far as I know, the God that I know is coming back. The Jesus that I know, the Yeshua that I know is coming back and he's destroying everyone that walks in falseness. Idols of the minds and idols of the hands, idols of the eyes, ruled by their desires and riches and success and prosperity and fame and fortune. They want gain. They have dreams. They have goals. They have secret ambitions. Am I hitting somebody here? And no wonder you don't have the power to shut off your TV. And when you do shut off the TV, it's legalism and you're still thinking about your TV because you're bored with it and not enjoy, have enjoyment with the word of God or prayer. You're enticed by the Satanism of the world, the sorcery of the world. That's why in, in, in Revelation it says it was sorcery. Business was sorcery. It sure is sorcery. Because all you're doing is looking at numbers trying to predict the stock market, trying to predict your future and plan your future. You're trying to plan your future success for gain. Why do you think Saul sought somebody? Mm. No wonder people are wanting to hear a prophet that speaks of Jesus' name then tells you what you want to hear. Tells you something about the future. But they're telling you good and sweet things rather than the destruction that's really going to come because people won't repent. How do you know a true prophet from a false one? A true prophet will not receive gain for himself. A false one will all day long. And they'll tell you prophecy. Guess what they work for? A non-profit organization for profit. There's people that say, I'm strong enough not to watch these movies. There's people that say, I'm strong enough to overcome this. So you can sit at a table of demons and say, I'm, oh, I'm stronger than this. So you, by your, your philosophy, since you love philosophy so much and your stupid theology and doctrines that you read books from men all the time. So you, by your, your philosophy, and I'm just going to say this, you, a room full of people with coronavirus, you can walk into that room and you're not going to catch a coronavirus with everybody sneezing and coughing. You can just sit there all day and be like, oh, fun time, guys, party. 
I'm pretty sure you're going to get sick. <clears throat> In the same way, you keep being influenced by the world and letting yourselves be open to these things. Your eyes, your ears, you're not protecting it. Your mind, your thoughts, and at least your heart and your actions. Guess what? You're not going to be ruled by the spirit of God, but the spirits of the world. Spirits of Egypt, the gods of Egypt, the gods of Babylon, the gods of Mesopotamia, the gods of Rome, the gods of Greece, the gods of Assyria, the gods of Persia, the gods of the world. All these different religions, Hinduism, guys, Buddhism, all these gods that you see, it's Islam, Sheikhism, Shintism, Shintoism, Jainism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism, Baha'i, Chinese re religion and paganism, Irivazi, all these different religions, guys, came from times of the past. The demons and the evil spirits of wicked, the wicked past. In Judaism, it's even crept into Judaism today. Christianity, Christianity today, it's crept in. That's why Catholicism, it's so much is mixed. You say, ah, I don't keep Catholicism, but you keep Christmas and Easter. Yes, you keep Catholicism. Most of the belief systems, if you looked at, I, I'm not going to get into, but most of the beliefs and the doctrines and theologies is from Catholicism. Most of your beliefs, in, even in Judaism, we have Jainism. Jainism beliefs. We even have Hindus beliefs in Christianity and Judaism. That's why people want to read some rabbinical literature. Why? The, the, the rabbinical rabbis are drunk. Oh, they have some wisdom. Yeah, the, the wisdom from demons. Why do you think people sought necromancers? Why do you think people sought di diviners that God told you not to seek? Because you'll go after a familiar spirit. He said, I'll cut you off because you're seeking a familiar spirit. But rather than spirit of one true God, that's what he says. I'll cut you off. Do not worship any other God. Your body is a temple and you're not to be a temple of demons. You're not to be a temple. There's people who say, oh, I can't be, I cannot be, uh, you, get, you can be oppressed. You can't be possessed. Who told you that? You even know where that even came from? You just repeat things that you don't even know from familiar spirits because you read something that looks, oh, this looks really good. Yeah, it felt good to you. Your belief system. It made sense in your mind because you're so busy free thinking that you don't sit there and listen to the true doctrine of God. That's why there's people who come to me, how much time do you spend actually studying? Yeah, how much time do you actually spend praying and submitting and dying? All these gods have came from the past. And I'll repeat that again. And he's, that's why he says in Exodus 23, 12 through 14, be careful to do what I, I, have to, what I told you to do, to keep my commandments, keep my laws, keep my rulings. He says, do not invoke or mention the names of other gods. Do not let them be found in your lips, meaning you're praying to them, you're, you're going after them. Don't let your heart's desire, your minds be after those other spirits or other gods. He says, keep the festivals, his festivals, not the world's festivals. Guess what the world's festivals were? It's always for entertainment and the service for their gods. No wonder people cannot be free. You want to be free. Guys, I'm revealing demons. I'm revealing spirits. I'm revealing this spiritual forces. I'm revealing these things because the Spirit of God, is, uh, He gives you wisdom greater than anything. And it's greater than man's wisdom. It's greater than any other gods. There's only one God and one God we should worship. One God that is living and breathing and, and speaking. The others are demons, guys. There's thousands and thousands of demons out there, guys. It's clear when He said that those people told Jesus, we are legion in Mark 5, 9. We are legion. We are many. That's why there's many people where there's one addiction, there's always two, if not three or four, five, six, many more. And that's why I tell you guys, when I see somebody who is ruled, I, God tells me these things. He tells me. And I, that's why I want you guys to pray for discernment. I'll pray for his wisdom. Pray for his, his prophecy. Whatever you might need to pray for, his strength, his, his, his faith. Pray for these things in wisdom, in knowledge, and understanding. 
Pray for these things so that you may apply it in your life and walk in the Spirit. Pray that you die more so that you, you, He may live in you more. This is what this means, guys, so that He'll reveal these things to you. And that's why I'm revealing these things so if people want to go back. They may take notes. They may take, you know, words. Different gods, although I, some of these things I spoke of, there's many different attributes to certain gods. Many different spirits are in just not one God, but multiple. That's why you have the God of Venus was beauty, love, and sex, desire. There's multiple gods, guys, multiple spirits, prosperity, fertility, victory, and prostitution. That's why these people look at porn. That's why these people can't turn their, their porn off. That's why they can't be free of porn. That's why they can't be free of the lust and ha wanting the desire for sex with other women and other men. That's why they, can't, they dress provocatively and can't dress holy. That's why they have to re be revealing and be revealing and show their breasts and their butts. And, and, and you know, men have to wear these shorty shorts and show their bodies because they are ruled by these things. I, I don't care how much you say I am Torah observant, how much I keep the holy days, how much I love God, how much I keep his ways and bow down to him and how much I serve him with all my heart, soul, and mind, how much you love him. You say with your lips and in your mind, you believe it, but you are still ruled by these things. You do not worship the one true God, but you're ruled by other gods and you must die to yourself, die to your flesh and allow the Holy Spirit and Rach HaKodesh to rule in you so that you may be saved and be sanctified and ruled by him and his power and his, his might and his grace alone through faith in the one true God. Because there's many other gods out there. And you're either living for other gods or you're living for the one true God. Why do you think people worship the Asherah, Asherah poles? Because for increase. That's why people say you're about to have a breakthrough. Increase is coming. A breakthrough is coming. Why? Because you're worshiping Asherah, the demons. And there's demons in the Christian churches today. Thousands and thousands of pastors filled with demons going straight to the pits of hell, leading you right there with them. There was demons they believed were plagues and pestilences. God always was, oh, let these things happen. Let these things happen. Why? Because God says, and that's why when the new heavens and new earth, there, these things won't exist. Why? Because he's restoring, he's restoring Edan, Eden, the Garden of Eden. He's restoring it back the way it was, but we're still in the flesh, but he's given us a choice of life or death. Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth. This means what are you going to do with the life he's given you? Are you going to live in death or are you going to live in life? The grace he's given you, are you going to live in the power of grace or the, the, the power of death? Sin and death. Sin is death. And there is no life in death. There's no life in these other gods and the things and the materialisms of the world. So in one way, one truth, and one life. And that's the grace of God that I know and we know. But he says, he's going to rule. He's Because in this world, are you going to go through all things? Job endured to the end. Lost all his riches, death, persecution, suffering, pestilence, a plague. Lost his, his children. His wife hated him, told him he was filled with a demon. He worshiped other gods, cursed him. And so does his friends, so does his family. Everybody around him cursed him and mocked him, scoffed at him. A man that was once well respected in love until he lost his riches, until he lost the pride of life, until he lost what everybody favored, loved so much about this man. Everybody loves a man that's rich until they can't give him anything, until that man is suffering. Your family don't care about you. What they care about is making sure that you don't find the true life. Many of your family is keeping you from the actual life. Because you're too busy trying to impress them, right? God uses these th things to allow these things to happen. Azazel was a scapegoat. They believed, and in Judaism, guys, that the demons, the demons is nothing new. They believed that the demons, after the scapegoat, when they released it. That's why you see in Jesus, when the scapegoat was to be Barabbas, the scapegoat, the sinner, was let free. That's the scapegoat when he died on the cross, but Jesus was died. He was a sacrificial lamb. Boom, died. The scapegoat was released into the wilderness outside the camp, outside the city gates and released into the wilderness. They transferred the sins. That's what they believe. And that's what Barabbas was, guys. Um, 
So the, the scapegoat they believe was filled with a demon. It roamed around in the wilderness. Notice that the devil was in the wilderness t trying to tempt Yeshua Jesus with success, prosperity, and fame, or like instant gratification right now and the power. What do you think? What do you think these pastors? It's not where you start. It's where you end. It's not where you start. It's where you end. And that's everything. Those who endure to the end will be safe. Now, we see right here, we see that there, there's other demons. Uh, they believe of the air, of the night, good and evil. They believe there's hairy demons. They believe all kinds of different things. Okay, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's even, there's actual, there's actual prayers for casting out demons. In Jewish antiquity, they found these things. This is nothing new, guys. Jesus casting out demons, this is something that's always been there, but we didn't have the faith to do it. We didn't have the power because we're so ruled by other false gods and spirits. These spirits rule us and you know, keep us from doing the miracles of God. That's why you must cleanse these spirits from your temple and not fight and mumble and complain against those that are trying to lead you in the righteous life. And no legalism, I mean in a true grace. Not a false grace, but I mean the true grace of God. You know why everybody's saying coexist today? Love all, let's just, just pray together, love each other in all religions, because they're following out their satanic spirits, demons. And that's exactly what's coming in our universal religion today, our global religion. It's already here, 1945, when, when the United Nations was founded. This stuff was already here. Their goal was to bring all religions into one, universalism. There's actually a religion called universalism. Guys, all these religions are spirits and demons mixing. Spirits and demons mixing. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you that, these, that we must allow God to change us and submit to his word, his authority, his rule, his reign, his laws, his ways, and just give up what we're holding on to. Otherwise, we're not going to find that life. We must give it up. Guys, there's nothing to be afraid of. Except the one, he says, fear. The one to be afraid of is the one that can destroy the soul and the flesh and the body. But don't fear the one that can harm the flesh. Satan cannot touch you if you're li living in the spirit, guys. It's not just a one day thing. Well, this week I just don't feel like it. I just want to go back to watching my TV and doing, you know, go. You're, that's why you're always hanging out with your, you know, your husband, your husband or your wife is always going out wanting to do stuff. So you just go right along with them instead of spending time to rest. Why do you think this Sabbath mass it matters? The rest. Guys trying to, it, Sabbath was for man, not man for, or, or for man, not man for Sabbath, meaning we are, to have rest so that we, we can spend that time to renew our minds and renew our strength. Because, you know, in ancient cultures, you're supposed to work six days a week. Chinese cultures, they still do it. Um, Asian cultures, cultures, some Asian cultures, I'm sorry. But what I'm saying, guys, is that... We have the one true way, one true life living in us. There's no gods that can rule, or no false spirits and demons that can rule over us. They can try. You're gonna, they're gonna come in your thoughts. They're gonna come in your emotions, your feelings. Um, they can try to make, you know, keep you entertained or distracted. If Satan can't get you to sin, they, there's times Satan will come and he'll try to bring you back in your flesh by temptations. But how do you overcome that? Your thoughts may be pure. That's why we're given this. Um, that's why the law is for, you know, for correction, rebuke, um, upright. It, it's, it's for a correction. It's like a guide lamp for us. But now that should live within us. And if we read it, it will light our path. He says your, your, your law is, you know, your word, your law, your word. 
It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's the word living in you, Yeshua. And that's why everything that you read from here, your spirit will understand it. But the those are still in the flesh that cannot understand the things of the spiritual way, of the kingdom. The kingdom lives within us. And if we're holy in the temple, guys, priests offering sacrifices to him, every day we're gonna be holy and righteous, continue to be sanctified. It's not a, just a time like, you know, where you just don't feel like serving them one week or next month or one month and you just serve them, you know, a little bit. It's a desire. It's a love. It's cherished. It's, it's more important than anything else. There's no legalism. There's no false grace, guys. So in one spirit of God, and that's all I'm here to say. You can go back if those that haven't watched this. You can watch again, take notes, free to use this, whatever. Um, I thank God and I want him to be glorified. I want him to be glorified because he cares and those who watch and he cares for. And you have a chance to repent. You have a chance to come to his glory and his amazing grace. Um, but you, you have to make a choice. You still want to hold on to these things or let it go. He's just to forgive us if we confess our sins. Some things remain hidden, guys. He says some things will be hidden even till his coming. But if we confess our sins, he is just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There's no sin, no lifestyle that you've done before that the blood of Christ cannot cover. I know the power of God, and I've seen it in many lives. And the power of God is this, that he has the power to change you from a sinful and worldly life and make one in holy, sanctified, and continue to sanctify you until his coming. Upright, holy, self-controlled. You will have peace and joy, I'm telling you. I love God's ways. And many of us have served the other gods. We have served other gods many times in our lives. And I know many of us ought have, but his grace is gonna pull it, us out and shun away every single God as if to remove the demons of legion, cast them into the pigs, then let them be thrown into the sea. He will heal us by his stripes. We are healed, meaning healed by sin and in righteousness by the blood of the lamb and his sacrifice we are cleansed from all unrighteousness so that we may live for righteousness that is the grace and the glory and the amazing grace of God oh, so much peace so much peace I love you guys may God bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you be gracious to, be, to you and give you his peace. I love you guys. Cry out to him and seek his face. From now until eternity. Live for his kingdom now. Until his, his kingdom comes. Where we'll be like him and see his image. Keep striving. Love you guys.